Hello everybody and welcome back to another um, demonstration with watercolour. Uh, this video uh, is quite a nice um, experiment for me, uh, quite a nice painting to do. I'm going to show you how to create a dramatic sky and if you stick around I'll be showing you some, um, I've got some of the Schmincke uh, Horridam granulate, super granulating paints. So I'll be applying some of that as well uh, to the later stages. Um, so welcome back. Um, this is uh, quite a nice uh, painting to do. And I guess it doesn't really matter of the experience you are with watercolour. If you're new to watercolour or if you're uh, already um, already experienced. Um, so I'm... Um, I'm applying the wash, you can see quite a nice pale mixture. And I wanted some of this uh, yellow ochre, a um, bit of red, um, sort of uh, coming through um, the clouds. I'll be using quite a lot of strong colours in the sky. Um, so this is the undercoat, this is the under painting stage. So I want some of this to shine through and as you can see it's a nice warm colour. So. It's going to um, have a really nice uh, glow in the sky. Um, so this one I'm using my, uh, it's quite a small hake brush, but it's also um, quite large for a brush. It's a two inch hake brush. And I'm just uh, popping the paints on. You can see a little bit of blue now. Um, just adding, and then going in with some more uh, darker, I'm using a bit of uh, Payne's Grey with the blue mix. Uh, this is actually uh, straight from my butcher's tray. So I'm just dabbing in a bit of colour here and there. It's a bit hit and miss. Um, but I want um, lots of different colours in the sky. Give it a nice interesting effect. And obviously I'm using my um, my paper as an angle. So it's taped tape down with decorators tape to my board and that's at about a 40 degree angle so i'm using gravity to help um, with this painting so using water and gravity and i'm letting that all just come down the paper um, i want almost like a, a rain effect in this uh, painting um, so you'll see that as i uh, add some more paint I don't usually fiddle around too much with the sky. Um, I think this is probably the most I've ever, uh, most time I've ever spent painting the sky. Uh, usually I like to keep it nice and fresh and um, not to overwork it. But let me know in the comments what you think. Um, how do you use, how do you uh, use watercolour to make your skies? Um, let me know what you think. Um, leave a comment. And also, if you uh, please do give me a thumbs up if you're still watching this video so far. And also, uh, just leave a comment and let me know what you think of this painting in general. Um, if there's anything you like to recommend, then please do so in the comment section.
So I'm just adding some more uh, dark, darker tones to the uh, clouds. I want some quite dramatic effects, so just uh, going in with layers. Uh, obviously, I think the first first wash is uh, completely dry, so now I'm just going in with uh, with more paint. So it's important that you leave the first wash to dry if you're going in with different layers because you will have some uh, not nice effects, um, some cauliflowers, some blooms, things like that. Unless you're going for that look, um, then I would suggest you uh, dry each stage. So just going in and defining some more clouds and uh, just, just adding a few, I guess, some hard edges and some soft as well as I'm putting in some pen and um, often I tie uh, follow it with uh, just a wet brush just to soften it soften back on the edges as I'm doing so the paper I'm using uh, is the Jackson 140 pound gold press um, it's I think it's just a box down with paper but it's quite nice it's quite nice to use but I have just ordered and I've just received um, some cotton paper. It's been quite some time since I've used any ash uh, paper or any cotton, cotton paper, so I'm quite excited about that. So we'll try that and make it in the next few videos. So as I mentioned before, I'm using my hair brush and this here is one of my Squirrel Her Mop brushes. Uh, quite a nice uh, brush to use just to get some of those uh, finer details. And I'm using the Jackson's watercolours. They're a professional grade and uh, just what I've got in my butcher's tray. Um, So yeah, not, not being too careful, but just uh, I can afford to slow down on this stage now um, because I've done the, the most of the work's done. Now I'm just adding little bits here and there. And later on in the paint, and I will be using um, some uh, super granulating paints and those are Schmincke Horridan paints. And they were really, really nice paints to use. I know I've, I've said it in previous videos. But if you don't um, have any Schmincke Horridan paints, and if they're in your budget, then I would recommend them. Those paints are really, really nice pigmented paints. And they do have the uh, super granulating range. Um, again, I think they were a bit more expensive. Um, but you'll see, hopefully you can, you'll be able to see um, what sort of effects you'll be able to get from using those as well. So what I'm doing here, I'm just uh, taking the hard edge off some of the uh, clouds that I've done. And I'm doing this with a wet brush or a slightly damp brush. And I'm twirling the brush in my hand as I let the uh, bristles sort of rotate on the paper. Just lifting off some of that paint as I do. And it just gives a softer, um, softer edge, which is quite nice. And you can see um, some of the effects now I've got in the sky. Um, just manipulating some of the paint now coming down in straight lines and I want this to look like um, rain coming from the clouds so it could be rain falling onto the landscape so I am going to put a little um, a bit of land on the bottom uh, just to give this sky something um, uh, some sort of uh, I guess background or whatever you may uh, call it um, and that's what I'll be doing. It's important to remember as well that watercolour is a transparent medium. Um, so as you layer and as you sort of go dark with the tones, um, you can leave um, some of the unpainted paper for highlights. And that's what I'm doing here. You can see um, I just want a few suggestions, um, not really painting buildings, but it's I'm just giving the impression so you can see where I've left uh, the paper. 
just bits of paper here and there, just little shapes of uh, squares and rectangles. So these could be uh, reflected light um, from roofs or could be glass or any sort of structure, man-made structure, um, just to give a little bit of um, a little bit of a um, landscape feel to this painting. Um, but it is mostly, uh, I suppose, uh, quite abstract, quite surreal. Um, so I'm just adding these darker tones now, just here and there. And I'm adding this into the wet paint. And also, uh, I am using some of the Schmincke Horridam super granulating paints now. So hopefully you can see um, what, what that means. Um, you can see what that paint does. Um, as far as I am aware, that it's um, a pigment that's made up of different colours. And the binding for the colour is, um, it, it sort of separates as you put it on paper. So you can see all these different colours uh, coming from it and it, it granulates. So it sort of separates on the paper. So I'm just lifting some of the, um, some of the uh, land here. And I'm doing that again by rotating the brush in my fingertips. And um, just adding bits of paint here and there, just a few suggestive um, some of the things that you may si see in, in a landscape hill. Um, so you've got suggestions of trees, um, maybe a bit of a church on the uh, on the hillside, a uh, shape of a church, and then just a few buildings dotted around. Hopefully you can see uh, the super granulating paint. Um, I did, I did use one colour. Uh, not too sure of the colour which it was that I used. Uh, I believe it was a brown uh, tone. Um, so you know, I can always uh, let you know what, what colour that was. Uh, leave us a comment in the comment section and I can always answer you. Uh, but I'm sure it was a brown, sort of earthy tone and it gave this nice uh, sort of grey mixed with brown and, and, and all this sort of thing going on. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think. Do you use these uh, super granulating paints? Is it something you would like to uh, try? Um, and let me know what you think of this painting um, obviously it really does help my channel to grow it helps um, when you do leave a comment it, it helps um, the algorithm get to more people my videos will get pushed out to more so you can see uh, some of the interesting things here uh, if we just take a closer look uh, you can see all the different colors and uh, the way the colors have mixed on the paper and that's something I like to do. You can see some of the textures 
um, some of the textures that from using coal press paper as well. And then you got the highlights of some buildings, some suggested buildings there on the right hand side, and um, some some really nice effects from the granulation of the paints. So as always, just remove the um, the tip, and it gives us a nice clean crisp border. And uh, there we have it. So hopefully you like this one. Um, if you if you want to have a go, then please do give it a go uh, just just don't go too crazy with the sky you can sort of add details but i would wait for the first wash to to dry if you're going to go in and um, carry on with layers um, but just really let the water set the pigment down the paper and let the pigment the, the water sorry help uh, mix the paints together um, so i did did use a large hake or you could use any sort of large brush and can use any sort of color of your choice um, but i would limit the the palette i'd only use a couple of colors um, but that's entirely up to you which ones you use anyway thanks for watching um take care and i'll see you in the next video